annoying. It makes you wonder. Oh my God, how annoying is her voice? It makes you wonder. Why does his staff want him to hide away? One must question. One must question. Are they afraid that people will see that he is too weak and unstable to lead America? Is that what's going on? It's like it's like horrible. I think I I forgot how annoying that clip was. I I thought I'll be honest with you. I thought that uh, I thought that I had I thought this was an annoying clip. You guys watch the debate. <laughs> right. He has quote concepts of a plan. Concepts. Okay, I was right. That also is an annoying. They're all annoying. I can't oh, I could just can't listen. There's no way. I couldn't listen to a podcast for 3 hours with her talking about uh, that kind of stuff. But she's she's saying Donald Trump is hiding, which is not true. And she's saying Donald Trump may have some kind of health concerns and his staff is hiding him away. And Donald Trump, I'll be honest with you, again, I see him at rallies. He was at a rally yesterday. In fact, there was a medical emergency at Donald Trump's rally, not his. There's a lot of people that have medical emergencies at Donald Trump rallies. It's kind of an issue. It's kind of a problem. People go to these Donald Trump rallies and they wait in line. And most of them are in the heat. Uh, you know, a lot of them are in Arizona. A lot of them are in uh, Georgia. A lot of them are in these places that are very, even in Pennsylvania, you can get a little hot. And if you get there at seven, eight in the morning and you're standing in line for 12 hours and then you finally get in, you're still surrounded by people. You're on your feet. There's no chairs. There, I mean, there are in some places, but very few. And so there's medical emergencies. A lot of folks pass out. A lot of folks are older to begin with. And they, and they have some kind of medical issue that needs to be taken care of. And Donald Trump always says, get, get, he's got medical staff on site. He's got EMTs there. He's got people to take care of his people because that's the kind of president he is. But the other thing he does is he stops. He doesn't want to talk. He doesn't want to do anything. He waits for the medical emergency, emergency, uh, emergency to subside. He, and we've seen it repeatedly, stands on stage very quietly, very respectfully, very demure, and he very mindful, and he just waits. And he waits until the doctors leave because, look, if he keeps talking, the crowd's going to keep cheering and it's going to get in the way of the doctor. If he keeps talking, people are going to start screaming USA and applauding and it's going to get in the way. He doesn't want to rile up the crowd while there's a medical doctor or EMT or somebody taking care of a patient. He waits till they leave. Well, yesterday at this rally, there were two medical emergencies. So Donald Trump basically stopped the rally and started playing songs out of his, out of his iPod, out of his iPhone. And the media had a field day with it. They were talking, Donald Trump's rally ends early. He spends 30 minutes on stage playing songs. I kid you not. You can go, in, you'll see this. The View had a field day with it. They were like, Donald Trump's going crazy. He just stopped mid-rally and started playing songs and dancing to YMCA. Okay, so Donald Trump, out of respect for the two people who were having medical problems at his rally, stopped, started to play music, started to dance and joke with the crowd, and at the same time they're reporting that, you have Kamala Harris out there saying, Donald Trump is hiding? Donald Trump has medical issues? <laughs> Donald Trump doesn't rest. Donald Trump doesn't stop. Donald Trump does podcast interviews at three in the morning. Donald Trump will talk to anybody, anywhere, at any time. He'll go on the news. He'll go do live events. He'll go back on the news. He'll call into the news. He'll go do a podcast here, a podcast there, a live stream. He invites people to Mar-a-Lago, and he goes to their studios as well. He's constantly on the plane. He's constantly moving. The man never rests. And in fact, he was on a podcast, and he was asked about when he rests. Listen to what he said. At three in the morning, you're here, and then you're going over here. You're, just, yeah. you're jumping all over the place. Yeah, no. Where do you find time to rest? Um, I really don't find too much time to rest. Look, the way I look at it is that, and, and you have two opinions on this. Some people, would, she rests, Kamala rests. In fact, she's almost <laughs> resting all the time. She does very little. She takes, you know, days off. And mm -hmm. I'm not knocking that. You know, that's another, I guess. You got to get your eight I'm hours. I'm an eight hours guy myself. Really? Yeah, well, I'm not eight hours. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I get I'm, moody. I'm, I'm less than eight hours. But, but um, <laughs> you can't, you know, you got... What do we have? Twenty three days, mm -hmm. but I've been going for like a lot. You know, mm -hmm. I've been, I haven't. I don't know what it is, but thirty something days, and um, I don't intend. I was telling the guys. I said, "You guys already because we're gonna. This is a sprint. 
And it's amazing because you start off at four years and then you have to run and you have to go through primaries and stuff and you have to get that and it's a big deal. I've gotten three in a row, right? Mm -hmm. That's never been done before. You know, three primaries in a row has never been done before by anybody but FDR, right? I guess. I mean, he was an incumbent, so he didn't really have to run in his primaries. But Donald Trump, he's right three primaries he's had to get through. And he's been running again for four years. He had four years in the middle uh, where all he did was run for president. He's constantly up. He's constantly at him. And Kamala Harris is coming at him, asking about his medical records, asking about his medical documents. Well, Donald Trump didn't take... He didn't. It's like the uh, it's like the Michael Jordan meme. And I took offense to that. <laughs> you know, Kamala Harris says, what is Donald Trump hiding? Why is his staff so concerned? Why isn't he releasing his medical records? And there's uh, there's Michael Jordan, Donald Trump going. And I took offense to that. So Donald Trump, <laughs> Donald Trump went on True Social, which, by the way, True Social, for those of you that aren't on True Social, really the only the, the only person who uses Truth Social as their primary account or as their primary social media outlet is Donald Trump. And that's that's one of the issues with True Social. I like True Social. I'm on True Social. But one of the issues is it's Donald Trump's platform. He built it when he got thrown off of Twitter and he uses it's his number one place to go. Donald Trump goes to True Social first. Everybody else on True Social, it's like their second or third or fourth. So basically what they do is they go to Twitter, they copy their tweet, and they put it on True Social. So when I go to True Social, I get to see what Donald Trump wrote, and then I get to see all the stuff I've already read on, on Twitter, on X, rather. Um, so that's the one. We got we to gotta figure out a way to make it more. We got to figure out a way to make uh, True Social more of a primary destination for people to create brand new and exciting content. I have some ideas. I'm going to share them with the board later on. But here's what Donald Trump wrote on True Social in response to Kamala. And this could be, I'm going to prepare you. I'm going to prepare you. I'm going to make a bold statement. This could be one of Donald Trump's best responses ever to anything ever in the history of ever. Donald Trump wrote, this was part two of a longer one. I won't read the As to her completely desperate request to see my medical statements, she is dying to see my cholesterol, which is 180. Exclamation point. I have already provided them many times, including quite recently, and they were flawless. However, I have just seen Kamala's report, and it is not good. <laughs> According to her doctor's report, she suffers from, quote, your tachyria, defined as, this is, this, I had no idea, this is, defined as, quote, a rash of round red welts on the skin that itch intensely, sometimes with dangerous swelling. She also has, quote, allergic rhinitis and allergic conjunctivitis, a very messy and dangerous situation. Now, conjunctivitis, as I know it, is pink eye. Does she have alert? Does she have allergic pink eye? That's disgusting. Uh, these are deeply serious conditions. This is the best part, by the way. These are deeply serious conditions that clearly impact her functioning. Maybe that is why she can't answer even the simplest of questions asked by 60 Minutes and others. What is this all about? I don't have these problems. Here's why this is gold. Donald Trump is the only person I know, only person I know, who would even try to link rhinitis, conjunctivitis, and a rash to the reason why Kamala Harris's 60 Minutes interview had to be edited. <laughs> she's got conjunct, she's got pink eye, and her nose is all messed up, and she's got this big, horrible, disgusting, swelling rash all over her body, and maybe that's why she can't answer a question directly. Maybe that's why 60 Minutes has to edit her interview questions, because of her because of her rhinitis and her pink eye. 60 minutes, she gives a horrible answer, yeah. and they change the answer. I think it's the biggest scandal in broadcast history. They, they actually took her answer out and gave her a different answer. Yeah, I saw that. After it was shot, and it's turned out to be a scandal. Yeah, it's, a, it's a huge scandal. <laughs> and so I Googled, I probably shouldn't have, but I Googled urticaria. You know, do you guys, I don't know if I should show the page. I'm going to show you some of these. So this is what came up when I Googled urticaria. Okay. 
and you get some of these understanding chronic blah 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 there's some big bubbly bumpy rashes red rashes causes allergens physical factors infections stress if she gets if she's getting stress bumps all over her body i don't think she should be president of the united i think donald trump is right if you're getting these if you break out because of i mean being president is stressful it's way more stressful than it's been for her being for her being vice president here's one here's here's some dude I think that's a dude. This is this is probably. I think this looks like a yeah. This is a dude for Kamala right here. He's got it all over his chest, and uh, and these things kind of happen when you're when you have stressful situations. And I don't think, or if she has pink eye, right? If you have like allergic, hold on, bear with me while I play WebMD here. Conjunctivitis. We should get a doctor on the show to discuss all of these things. Uh, allergy cause. Okay, here we go. Let's go to let's go to images. Look at this. This is. Is this what we want? People are going to be grossed out right now. Is this what we want when she's meeting with world leaders? She wants, I'm sorry, I can't shake your hand, Kim Jong-un. I have pink eye. I'm sorry, Vladimir Putin. I'm not going to shake your hand. I've got allergic, I've got pink eye. People are going to be like, what, was Doug farting on your pill again? What is, what is going on over there? I want to talk about your health. And I want to talk about your medical records and your medical position and how you're feeling and how good you could be feeling. And I want to do it by reminding you of one of my idols, one of my one of my new favorite people, a conservative, an American icon, and a friend of Mark K. Saves the Republic, Mr. Chuck Norris. And Chuck Norris is 84 years old. This guy's 84 years old. He's older than Joe Biden. He's older than Donald Trump. He's older than Kamala Harris. He's older than most people I know. And look at him. He still goes to the gym every day. He still boxes. He still works out. He works out longer and stronger and harder and faster than he ever has. And that's because Chuck Norris was able to discover. He was, a, he was able to discover one thing, one change. And when he made this change, he created dramatic changes in his help, in his health. He focused on three things that sabotage our bodies as we age. And look at him. Look at his wife. She feels like she's in her 50s. She's not, fun fact. But she said she felt 10 years younger as soon as she started doing what Chuck told her to do. And Chuck Norris has created a video. He's created a video where he tells you exactly what he did, exactly what his wife did, and exactly what this one change is that you must make in order to have more energy, live longer, live stronger, and hang out with your grandkids. I mean, it's amazing. And if you want to watch it and find out for yourself what it is, he's put it up on a website, chuckdefense.com slash MK, chuckdefense.com slash MK. To make it really easy for you, I put a link to the video in the description of this video. So when we're all done, you can click on that link and you can watch Chuck Norris. You can find out how he made one simple change focused on three little areas of his life and has all this newfound health and vitality and is still kicking booty well into his 80s. This is, oh, here we go. This, this is so funny. Kamala Harris released this, I want to say, like, yesterday. This came out quick. The Harris Walls Policy. Hmm. Kamala Harris will create an opportunity agenda for black men. Okay? So this is what Kamala Harris is going to do. I want, I'm going to zoom in on this. Look at this. She'll provide $1 million loans that are fully forgivable up to $20,000 for black entrepreneurs and others to start a business. So if you're a black entrepreneur and you would like to start a business, Kamala Harris will give you a million dollars. There you go. Congratulations, you're Donald Trump. And if for whatever reason it all goes south, it's fully forgivable up to 20K. So really what she's doing here is she's trying to buy black male voters for $20,000. Fully forgivable means you don't have to pay it back. We're going to give you a $20,000 loan. You go blow it and then come back to us and say, tried to start a business, didn't work. It's a write-off. Oh, well, thanks for playing. Thanks for voting for Kamala Harris. She's buying votes for $20,000. Illegal, immoral, pretty sure it's unconstitutional. Let's go to the next one. Kamala Harris is going to support education, training, and mentorship programs that lead to good-paying jobs for black men, including pathways to become teachers. This is totally, this is totally uh, redundant. I mean, I'm sorry. 
What's this? It's like, I don't get it. Are you going to get them good paying jobs or are you going to teach them to become teachers? Because teaching and good paying, that's a hypocritical statement right there. That's an oxymoron. We're going to support education training and mentorship programs that lead to good paying jobs for black men, including teachers. I don't know any black or white people who are saying, you know what a really good paying job is? Teacher. You know what's really gonna, you know what's really gonna set you up for success and your family up for financial freedom for years to come? You know what's gonna create that multi-generational wealth? Teaching. That's not at all, it's not at all, it's not at all a thing. Look, this is my favorite one. Protect cryptocurrency investments so black men who make them know their money is safe. What does that mean? Does that mean that if you buy Bitcoin and Bitcoin takes a takes a dump, that you you get your money back? I have Bitcoin. I have Ethereum. I'd like to be protected as well. No, no, no. I'm not a black voter, so I'm not going to get these kinds of protections. But if you're a black young man and you vote for Kamala Harris and Tim Walls and you invest in crypto and it goes south, then they'll protect you. They'll make sure that you're fine. Launch a national health initiative focused on the illnesses that disproportionately impact black men. I have a question. Why hasn't she been doing this all along? Why didn't Barack Obama do this? You're telling me that there's no national health initiative focused on the illnesses like sickle cell disease that disproportionately impact black men? Is there no Barack Obama, the first black president, didn't do this? Joe Biden, who said famously, if you can't tell whether you should vote for Donald Trump or me, you ain't black. He didn't do. If you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. Yeah. Wait a minute. Why didn't, I'm sorry, why didn't Joe Biden do that? And then finally, she's going to legalize recreational marijuana and create opportunities for black Americans to succeed in this new industry. Now, historically, Kamala Harris likes to tell you two things. Number one, she came, she was a middle class kid. She grew up a middle class kid from a middle class family. And two, she was a prosecutor. She was a prosecutor and she stood up to people that were criminals. And really the people that she stood up to were black men who dealt drugs and she threw them in jail and she didn't care at all until now. Now, all of a sudden she needs their votes and those black men that she arrested and threw in jail and put away for small amounts of marijuana possession and small amounts of trace amounts of if drug possession. Problem, figure why, it is out that, you're why does that keep playing? Uh, shut up, Joe Biden. Now she wants to legalize recreational marijuana and create opportunities for black Americans to succeed in this new industry. So she's going to make it legal or push to make it legal on a state by state basis. Then she won't have to throw you in prison if you're using it. And also, you know what? We'll get you some jobs in the drug trade. And that'll help you create that multi-generational income that you've been searching for. Kamala Harris, who used to lock up black drug dealers, is now going to make them legal black drug dealers. That's her plan. That's her plan to woo back voters. That, and she's going to go on the Joe Rogan podcast. It is really, it is really insanity over there. I don't know who's writing this stuff. I don't know who's coming up with this stuff. I don't know who's running her campaign I don't think anyone's running her campaign, but whoever's running her campaign is running it into the ground. So like I'm saying, hopefully they don't make any changes over there. And if you know anything about the Democrat Party, they don't make any changes. The Democrat Party, they can lose and lose and lose and nobody gets fired. Alejandro Mayorkas is still the Homeland Security Secretary. Think about that. Corinne Jean-Pierre is still the White House Press Secretary. The only person that the Democrat Party has actually fired in the last four years was Joe Biden. And they didn't even really fire him. They just told him, maybe you should retire early. I mean, it's crazy. They lose and lose and lose and they don't change a thing. Kind of like the Jacksonville Jaguars. Thank you very much.